In this video today, we are going to continue talking about collectible comic books and comic book series that you can add to your collection for not that much money. Right here, right now, coming at you. Hello to all of my pop culture aficionados. Dante D here and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. Last week we posted this video wherein we talked about some collectible series of comic books and some different issues that you can add to your collection for really not that much money. This video was really meant for new people that are uh, coming into the comic book collecting hobby. But uh, if you are a seasoned comic book collector, this video would probably be beneficial to you if you're looking to bolster your collection with some really awesome collectible comic books that really don't cost that much. In the comments of this video, YouTube user It Came From The Nerd Cave, shout out to you It Came From The Nerd Cave, made some really awesome suggestions for some other collectible series of comic books that you can add to your collection for really really cheap before we get into this video i just wanted to thank everybody for coming out weekly to uh, watch these videos on economical comic book collecting the response has been great on these videos and i just love doing these as we all know the comic book collecting hobby can be very very expensive so it's nice to be able to add some nice books to your collection uh, while saving some money if you all are enjoying these types of videos and this type of content, I would encourage you all to please, please crush that subscribe button and that like button. You see the subscribe button and the like button on these videos are very, very offensive. I find them very offensive. So every time I'm on a video, I, I, I definitely hit them and I think you should do the same thing too. Also check out the channel for other videos on topics related to geek culture. So with that out of the way, let's get into some more picks of comic books and comic book series to add to your collection very cheaply. These are a mix of, uh, it came from the Nerd Caves picks and some picks that I have also added to this list. Starting off with Batman Legends of the Dark Knight. I can't believe I forgot this one on the last video. Uh, but the last video was kind of getting a little long, so uh, I'm kind of happy that I have enough now to be able to do a part two. So Legends of the Dark Knight uh, is, you see it right at the, at the top of the number one. It's the first solo Batman book since the 1940s, at the time it was anyway. And uh, this book sold very, very well. Legends of the Dark Knight was a little bit of a different book because it didn't really tie into the other Batman books at the time, which were Detective Comics and the... Uh, self-titled Batman series. You see, Detective Comics and Batman, they really kind of crossed over a lot, but Legends of the Dark Knight did not. It was kind of its own solo thing. Really, really cheap to add Legends of the Dark Knight to your collection, and I'm telling you, Legends of the Dark Knight is an amazing, amazing read. Some of the best Batman stories I have ever read come from Legends of the Dark Knight. Uh, you can get this at your comic shop, like, Super, super cheap. I remember I picked up the first, I think, 10 issues of Legends of the Dark Knight for probably $7. This was a few years ago, but uh, it was so cheap, and I was just in awe over the quality of the, of the story and the art in Legends of the Dark Knight. Now, if you're new to comic book collecting and you're paying attention to different covers and things like that, you'll notice that there are multiple covers for Legends of the Dark Knight number one. They're all different col colors, but... Don't worry about it. Uh, they're all the same book. The covers are just all of different colors. I guess that was just kind of that gimmick that was going on at the time. All the publishers were doing it, uh, wherein they were releasing different covers to uh, really kind of boost sales. If you can, definitely try to pick up the first 20 issues or so of Legends of the Dark Knight because it's great. Actually, one of my all-time favorite Batman stories comes from Legends of the Dark Knight, and that is Batman Venom. This is a story by Denny O'Neill, who's one of my favorite Batman writers, and uh, it's a story about Batman failing to save this, this little girl, and afterwards he thinks that he's not strong enough, so he starts taking the same venom that Bane takes to, to make him stronger. And Batman becomes this like roided out jock who uh, 
really doesn't care about anything except for working out and being strong. He actually starts to get really stupid. It's just a great story, and I would definitely check it out. It's definitely a story uh, with a theme about addictions uh, and and uh, having these addictions and trying to get over them. So it was really kind of powerful uh, in that way as well. But uh, overall, even if you're not you don't care about the theme, it's still a really great read. Reader's Pick, of course, we always do Reader's Pick. Reader's Pick for Legends of the Dark Knight. There are tons of different volumes. Uh, I'm personally going to suggest Batman Venom, which is an absolutely, absolute great story. You definitely have to check it out. The Punisher War Zone and the Punisher War Journal. Punisher was a huge character in the 1980s and the 1990s. Basically, once comic books took this darker turn with... The Dark Knight Returns and Watchmen, all these dark anti-hero type characters started really going up in popularity and Punisher was definitely no exception. Punisher War Zone and Punisher War Journal, great reads, definitely suggest adding them to your collections. In fact, Punisher War Zone uh, is this cover here. This is one of the most notable covers from the 1990s. It was one of those die cut covers. Again, a lot of this was going on in the 1990s but it's still a really cool cover and uh, really will take you back if you were around uh, during that time. Check it out, awesome art, awesome stories, and definitely cheap to add to your collection. The Incredible Hulk by Peter David. Peter David probably had one of the most legendary runs on The Incredible Hulk. Incredible Hulk has been a character that's been around for a long time, since the early 1960s, and Peter David really did an amazing job to kind of stand out as one of the best Hulk writers of all time. You ask any person what Hulk stories they recommend, they'll tell you, you know, Planet Hulk. A lot of people will tell you Immortal Hulk, uh, which is really hot right now and is a modern book. But they'll also talk about Peter David's Hulk. You need to add this to your collection. These books might be a little bit more expensive just because they are uh, Peter David's Hulk and it's such a notable and popular run but they're definitely not going to be expensive to the point where it's going to burn holes in your pockets or break your bank so definitely check check out Peter David's Hulk uh, and I definitely for the readers pick would recommend the Peter David Hulk omnibus uh, omnibus is a pretty expensive but you're getting a lot of value uh, for what what you're paying and the, the omnibuses are great. I've been collecting a lot of omnibuses uh, of late and I am not, not disappointed with the money I've been spending on them. So definitely check it out. The link for any of the reader's picks today are in the description. Amazing Spider-Man number 301 to 328. This is Todd McFarlane's Spider-Man. I know in the last video I told you to avoid Todd McFarlane Amazing Spider-Man because it can be expensive. But I was really talking about any of the books that were pre number 300 because obviously 300, Amazing Spider-Man 300 was the first appearance of Venom, 299 was the first cameo appearance, so on and so forth. But afterwards, the books do kind of go down in value. Now, mind you, these are probably gonna be some of the more expensive books on the list, but again, you can still add them to your collection without spending a lot, a lot of money. So if you want a legendary Spider-Man run Definitely check out Amazing Spider-Man number 301 to 328. Todd McFarlane is one of the most notable Spider-Man creators of all time. And uh, his, his work was just great. I personally enjoyed and really, really liked it. And I'm sure you will too. Reader's pick for Todd McFarlane's Spider-Man is this beauty right here. And I encourage you all to pick it up by following the link in the description. Barry Windsor Smith's Weapon X Run. This is another series that I cannot believe that I forgot to add in our list that we did last week, just because this is definitely one of those uh, most notable runs from the 1990s. Uh, this series actually was not called Weapon X. It wasn't an actual series called Weapon X. This storyline appeared in a, a comic book title called Marvel Comics Presents. It was actually an anthology book. Now, Barry Windsor Smith both wrote and did the art. His art is absolutely amazing. Some of the best Wolverine covers I think I've ever seen in my life come from this series. And you actually could still add this series to your collection for not that much money. So I really would encourage you to pick it up. Check out your local comic shop. 
there are so many of these that are floating around so you definitely probably will not have a difficult time tracking some of these down but if you're just in it to read i totally understand because this is one of those stories that you absolutely need to read as a comic book fan and is essential reading for any wolverine fan reader's pick is the weapon x trade paperback and of course, you definitely can pick up this book by following the link in the description. So those were all It Came From The Nerd Caves picks. And uh, I decided to add two additional picks to this list. One of them is Batman Shadow of the Bat. Another great Batman book from the 1990s. And actually Batman Shadow of the Bat, believe it or not, is the first appearance of Victor Zazz. And Batman Shadow of the Bat, number one. and you probably would not believe me if I told you how cheap this book was. You will definitely be able to find Batman Shadow of the Bat, number one, the first appearance of Victor Zaz in bargain bins at your comic book store. Again, these things are flying everywhere. This book sold really well. There, there's so many of these all over the place. You definitely will not have a problem tracking these down. And I definitely would encourage you to check out Batman Shadow of the Bat because it is just such a a great read. I really love Batman Shadow of the Bat. I'm kind of biased when it comes to Batman just because I absolutely, Batman is one of my favorite superheroes. Reader's pick for Batman Shadow of the Bat is of course this lovely trade paperback here. There's so many different trade paperbacks for Batman Shadow of the Bat and uh, you can pick these up for a relatively good price. If you want to pick them up, link is in the description. Like I mentioned last week, when first getting into comic book collecting, people are always looking to add the big names to their collection. They, they're they looking for Spider-Man, Batman, Captain America, Hulk, uh, and especially the X-Men. Now the X-Men is definitely a book that was super, super popular, especially in the 1980s. Chris Claremont, John Byrne, the whole Dark Phoenix thing, I'm now I'm not recommending those books because they're they're a great read. Don't get me wrong. Definitely check them out. But uh, they're super expensive to add to your collection. But the alternative to that, if you're into the whole Jean Grey Phoenix thing, is going to be X Factor. I absolutely love X Factor. Great, great read. Uh, this was a late 1980s release. And this is where you see Scott Summers and uh, Angel and all the original uh, X-Men getting back together to start their own team. And believe it or not, this is the book in which Jean Grey comes back and it's explained how she is still alive and uh, she wasn't destroyed during the whole Phoenix thing. Really cool read, really awesome. Uh, I, I really love it. The number one is super cheap. Number two, like these issues are really cheap. The only issues of X Factor that are going to be a little bit more expensive are going to be X Factor number four and number five because they are the first appearances of the X-Men villain Apocalypse. And there actually was a movie made about uh, Apocalypse a few years back. I actually liked it. There were some people that didn't, but uh, you know, I, I personally did. Um, so X Factor, definitely pick it up. Reader's Pick is going to be the X Factor trade paperback. Link is in the description if you would like to pick it up. So that about does it for our video today. Really, really hope you enjoyed it. Love to hear from you all in the comments. Let me know if you think there are any other really notable runs that are really cheap to add to your comic book collection. And until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.